name is Kayla Amanda. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today we are going to talk about how I paid a stranger to read my book, which is scary and terrifying, but ultimately hugely beneficial. There's something about getting an unbiased opinion from just a genuine reader that I really wanted. I wanted to know what like a normal reader would think of my book. And I ended up taking Danica Gray's advice and going on Fiverr. With my excellent research skills, I just typed in beta reader paranormal romance and a bunch of options came up. There's a bunch of people who are specifically advertising that they will read your paranormal book, including two people who specifically said shapeshifter books, which we all know is what I'm struggling through now. The option I ended up going with actually was a little bit more expensive and offered a little less in return content but I didn't need the extra return content, which for someone who isn't in my specific position might actually be very useful content. The other option offered uh, title suggestions and like a back matter blurb and some marketing ideas in order to help you frame that part of your process. But since I'm not doing that part of the process, it wasn't important to me to get those things. What I really wanted was someone who loved my genre and would know what a normal reader, someone who is not invested in me, would think about my book. And that's exactly what Alana Ash offered me, with a promise that she would not be judgy about my writing, which we all know I'm very self-critical about my actual work, so having someone who promised to be gentle with me even if they were being honest was nice. She also had a great cover for her gig, much like a novel cover. It was eye-catching and compelling. It was very in line with what paranormal romances do for actual covers, so I think that that helped draw me in and make me feel like she knew my genre really well. It wasn't just like a wolf or just text or a picture of herself. The first roadblock was length. Her largest gig was for a 50,000 word novel and my project was 95,000 words. It was actually 94,875, but um, I'm just gonna call it 95,000 because that's easier. I have no idea how it managed to get that big that quickly. Like I've said before, I felt like it was 60,000 words last time I checked, but I split it up to work on it in separate documents for Act 1, 2A, 2B, and 3. So I think it was very easy for me to just like inch up in word count as I was sort of thinking about it in these separate parts. And none of them had that big a word count, so I didn't think about the whole having a big word count. And I ended up having to message her and ask her specifically if she would be willing to take on a project that was that huge. I mean, 95,000 words is a ton, especially if they're shitty words and you have to give like thoughtful cogent feedback that's helpful and like insightful not just oh it was cool or whatever so I reached out to her and she was more than willing to take on my project even though it was massive we talked about a price and turnarounds time and honestly I think both were really reasonable her total turnaround time was only three days for 95,000 words and that is with giving me feedback that was helpful thoughtful and insightful all the fulls she was like really clear and concise and had really helpful feedback on structure and theme and characters which have proved instrumental in me moving forward and making additional adjustments to revise it all over again she was also very available to me for about a week afterwards as i sort of processed her feedback and went through everything she had to say there was things that i wanted more clarification on or didn't quite understand what she was getting at and she was compassionate and kind and helpful and I just thought her bedside manner was great. Getting a stranger to read your book can feel really scary and getting negative feedback on your book can be really scary. I've got some experience with getting negative feedback on my creative work from obviously creative writing classes in college. There's definitely that aspect of letting people who don't necessarily give a shit about you say bad things about your work but this was a much bigger work that I had put a much more time into. And I think that the way that Alana handled it and how sort of gracious she was, was just like a wonderful way to deal with me being kind of nervous about the whole process. So I loved working with her, which is part of why I think she really undercharges for her service. I ended up paying $250 all told. That's with um, Fiverr fees and taxes and stuff like that. It was $200 American, which ended up being about $250 Canadian when all was said and done. And I think she undercharged me. I think that the amount of effort she put in, how quickly she worked, and how 
like supportive and wonderful she was as um, someone who's providing feedback was worth a lot more than that $200. So I ended up tipping her an additional 50, which I maybe should have tipped her more. I really think she was sort of indispensable as a part of the process and I will never put forward a book again without getting someone like her to read it. I don't know if necessarily her for all of my projects, but um, certainly if I write another shapeshifter book. So at the end of the day, I ended up spending $300 on having her read my project, which I appreciate is like a lot of money for most people. I am in a really privileged position where my day job affords me financial security so that I can make those kinds of decisions. I can make a splurge like that without sacrificing rent or bills or food or anything like that. So for me, it was really worth the price, but I totally understand that not everyone is in that position. If you are in that position and if you feel as uncertain as I did about your project, I would highly recommend getting a stranger to read your book. I would specifically highly recommend getting Alana to read your book because I think she's wonderful and I will of course link her Fiverr gig down below. She has one that's like specifically I'll read your shapeshifter book and one that's just I'll read your paranormal mystery or sorry your paranormal romance um, and I just think she's great so you should work with her if you can. I think the best thing about having a stranger read my book was the thing I had been most afraid of in the beginning and I was totally wrong. The fact that we didn't have an emotional relationship and we didn't really care about each other as like people was a benefit and not at all a drawback. Because we didn't have an established relationship, because we didn't have a friendship, there was no feelings of like hurt when she didn't like something and it was easier for me to hear her feedback as just like blunt and honest without having any concerns that she might think less of me. I really vividly remember being in this creative writing class with this kid named Eric. We were friends, we got lunch before class, we hung out at break, we were buds. And we were also in the same critique group, which meant that we gave the class our first 10 pages of a novel on the same day and had to read it in the same week, which meant that the first time we got to see each other's writing was at the same time. And he said to me when we came back after a week that he was so glad I was a good writer because he didn't want it to be weird if he hadn't liked what I'd written. And I totally felt the same. It was like a very honest thing for him to say. And I realized that it maybe doesn't sound incredibly kind, but I didn't want to be in a position where a friend of mine wrote something that I thought was trash and I had to either lie to them or hurt their feelings. There's just so many ways in which that can complicate a relationship and we didn't have to worry about that. We both thought that the other one was a perfectly decent writer and there was no like weirdness that came out of it. And that's kind of how I feel about this book. I've of course given it to people who I love and who care about me and who want me to succeed. And I trust that they are gonna continue to care about me and love me afterwards. But there is a part of me, however irrational, that thinks they might think less of me because of what I've written or they might think less of me because of how rough it is and that's scary even if I know it's irrational. So having that stranger, someone who doesn't know me from God, someone who's not going to be weird next time we hang out, be the first person to give me that feedback and the first person to be critical, let me kind of process the feelings around negative feedback before I started hearing it from people who I had more of an emotional investment in. And I realized that that's me being like a fragile Pisces, but it was really helpful for me. And it really enforced for me that this is something I wanna make sure I'm doing going forward with all of my projects. As far as the actual critique, it boiled down to four main points. My book was too bloated, it was too long, there was too many characters, and I repeated myself. Alex's character needed to be introduced more strongly earlier in the book. Both of my characters needed to have their motivations made more clear earlier in the book. And four, I need more conflict. In case you're wondering, yes, I am having a panic attack about that. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna fix all of these problems yet. And this is part of why it's good to have a stranger read my book. It's easier for her to kill my darlings than someone who has emotionally been with me for the whole process of writing this and who uh, might be more cautious of my feelings or cautious of the time and effort that I put into it. It's easier for her to be cutthroat she said that one and three were the most pressing, it's too bloated and my motivations need to be made clearer, which I completely agree with her on. So I need to trim the fat and I need to make my characters crisper, clearer, more defined. I'm kind of incredible, you know, I managed to be both too cocky and too sure that my book is completely done and perfect and also too critical and too hard myself and 
judgy about my own ability to write. I managed to just overachieve in the worst possible ways, which is great. She didn't think the sex was hot though, so that's important. I think a steamy shapeshifter romance should have steamy sex, so I'm glad that that part delivered. It's one of the things that fanfiction served me very well on. I think technically what she did for me would be called an alpha reader. I don't know. I don't know anything about anything. I always just call it a beta reader because that's what we had in fanfic. We didn't have like alpha readers in fanfiction. You just sent it to betas. So that's what I'm referred to her as. But I think strictly speaking, she did alpha read for me, which the internet tells me is when you send your roughest of rough drafts to a stranger or to a, a reader. But I think that would be a violation of the Geneva Convention. If I sent her my roughest of rough drafts, I would go directly to prison and stay there for a thousand years because no one deserves to see that. She was also secretly baiting my beta process and it made it very clear that I have too many questions in my questionnaire. I ask the same thing too many times and I don't end up getting very helpful feedback from that. There was a number of times when she asked if I needed her to answer certain questions because she didn't have anything new to say. So what I think I'm gonna do is try to figure out a way to shorten up the feedback questions. Um, not so much, what did you think of Kara? What did you think of Asher? But maybe, what did you think of Kara and Asher? Give people an opportunity to talk about both of them and then be more specific at the midpoint um, and capture more feedback then as opposed to every three to five chapters just try to focus on roughly how did people feel about these chapter groups? Is there something important that they want to tell me? And then if I have any specific questions about things that happened in those chapters, I can ask those and then wait to collect sort of more general data at the midpoint and then at the end, as opposed to asking the same question over and over again. I think there was actually eight questionnaires that people had to fill out if they did my beta process, which is a lot in retrospect, so. Your daily reminder that I don't know what the fuck I'm doing and I am just fumbling along trying to figure it out. So don't take anything I say as cold hard facts, except that Alana Ash is a great reader and that you should work with her if you can because she was wonderful. So yeah, I have four big things that I need to work on in my novel and it's gonna take some real work and real structural revising to figure out how to make it all fit together in a nicer, tighter package, but that's what I paid her for. That was why I wanted that feedback from her. And it was really valuable in the long run. So as soon as I know how I'm gonna fix this, you will know how I'm gonna fix this. But until then, I just wanted to say thanks for sticking with me as always. And again, if you were looking to have someone read your paranormal romance, I cannot recommend Alana enough. She was wonderful and helpful and just very giving. <laughs> of her time and her energy and I think she was great. I'm gonna link her down below so that you can find her gig if you want it. If you were looking for me anywhere else, I'm pretty much everywhere is Kayla Amanda. That is K-A-Y-L-U-G-H-M-A-N-D-A and I'll see you next time.